right, hello everybody. I'm Tony Pellegrino and I'm from Gen Right Off-Road. This is part of a live tech talk that we do every Wednesday at 5 p.m. It is Wednesday, February 16th, and we've got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go ahead and comment in down on the bottom and somebody will come back and answer those comments, of course. Um, I wanted to uh, cover a couple of things that are gonna be happening in the next few days. One is um, AGM Products just posted a video of uh, kind of a recap of some of our previous year's KOH race moments. Pretty fun. We'll post a link in for that. And uh, part two of our Real Hammers experience is going to post uh, on Friday, February 18th at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So there'll be a link for that as well. Um, that is the second part of us all going out and pre-running for this year's KOH. Uh, be sure to turn on your notifications so that as we post new stuff, um, you'll get to know about it right away. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start right at our tool bags. So um, recently, we had to work on my Terramoto while we were out at King of the Hammers. I blew the rear shocks and a couple other things that we needed to tighten and, and work on. And uh, it was a good test to make sure that I had all the tools I needed in my tool bag. So um, I just wanted to tell you uh, we were 100% and I'm, I'm happy to report that I had all the right stuff in there and we were able to get the job done. So for those of you that don't know, we actually, uh, we make two different uh, size tool bags, this being the largest. You can put just about anything big in here and it is giant. Um, it, it would pretty much fit a small dog. And then we've got a smaller one um, that's also available. Both of these are available on our website, so you can check that out. Um, and uh, just, you know, handy to have their good heavy duty corridor bags. Uh, all right, next we're gonna talk about high steer. So for those of you that are not familiar with high steer, right now your factory steering is mounted on the bottom of the knuckle. It's basically as low as you can get it. It's very vulnerable and it's the first thing that hits if you go off-roading. And uh, right behind it is your steering stabilizer. So there, there's a few things that can easily get damaged. And uh, then, you know, of course your Jeep's not gonna steer right or it may pull or whatever's gonna happen, but um, you don't wanna damage your steering. <clears throat> so, this is your stock knuckle, and your factory steering is mounted down on the bottom. And uh, so, you know, this is where your hub goes, your uh, brake rotor, and your brake caliper. So, uh, both sides, driver and passenger, look just like this. And uh, what we offer now is the TerraFlex version of this, which is a much more heavy duty unit. And you can see this upper arm is up nice and high. You still have this lower arm, which is in the same position as the, the stock one. But um, this also, the way that they've drilled this, um, it gives you the ability to mount whatever you want on the top or the bottom by using these small inserts. And uh, these inserts are uh, slotted. So when you drop them in and you put the bolt in, it expands inside there and captures it tight. But you can put them in from the top or the bottom. So you can kind of mount your steering however you want. Just keep in mind when you do high steer, you need to have your track bar match whatever you're doing with your drag link or you're gonna get some crazy bump steer. So um, that said, you can always call in, talk to one of our advisors, our sales advisors, and those guys can really help you out. I did wanna show you, this does have the mount for the uh, uh, ABS brake pickup, the, the sensor. So um, this is a nice heavy duty piece though. Everything is much beefier on this and uh, these are available on our website. So one of our own guys is putting this particular one on his Jeep and uh, you know we've sold these for years and it's a, it's a real nice upgrade. A long time ago you didn't have this choice but now you do. You just put this on the passenger side and that's all you need. I did bring in this one because I wanted to show you the difference between the, uh, what would be on the Dana 30 or the Dana 44 and the Dana 60. So quite a bit of difference. You can see a bigger bearing, a much heavier duty knuckle, 
And uh, again, this also has an aftermarket high steer arm on it that then ties together for uh, double shear. So this is what we use on all of our Curry axles. But um, if you've got the smaller axle, this is a great option to run that, okay? All right, the next part of doing a high steer knuckle and high steer on your Jeep is going to be the tie rod and the drag link. So we offer a very thick wall chromoly tie rod and drag link. Um, this uses uh, an actual FK Heim, a jam nut, and a tube insert. So this slides in, it gets welded in, it does require welding. And uh, what we do is we provide you the tube in a little bit longer length than you need it. So you cut it down based on how wide your axles are. So this is not a bolt-in solution. The, uh, the rock jock correct link is still a great uh, bolt-on solution for a factory, you know, Dana 30 or Dana 44. And we also have those on our website as well. So this, this would be the next level up. This is very heavy duty and uh, hard to bend. You know, basically it's, it's gonna last you the life of the Jeep. And you're getting the bigger um, FK Himes. These are the same ones we've run on the race car, on the Terramoto, you know, all of our Generate builds run this same thing. Um, I wanna note, you know, we, we offer these bungs and the joints in uh, left and right hand thread. So that really helps when, uh, when you go to adjust this, you just break the jam nuts loose and you can roll the bar and it's screwing the, the length uh, longer and shorter. So uh, quite convenient. So that's all part of the kit. Um, what we do have is we offer this kit in two different sizes. So three quarter inch for the Dana 60 stuff, the big, you know, Curry Dynatrack stuff. And then we offer a five eighths for the Dana 30, Dana 44. And the reason is, is because I don't want you to drill this stuff out and make it too thin around the outside. Um, you know, all of these knuckles are cast and you know, they're, they're strong. There's no doubt about that. And it's a special kind of a cast, but um, you don't want to thin that material out too much. So um, an important thing, you want to order the five eighths for this uh, size knuckle. So that's fine. We offer that kit uh, in both five eighths and three quarter. And again, this is a do it yourself. You know, you cut it, measure it, weld it, the whole thing yourself. Uh, but when it's done, it is really heavy duty. So um, reminder, make sure that your track bar matches the drag link in terms of height and length or you're gonna get bump steer. So um, that's an important aspect of putting high steer on. And if you have any questions on that, just call in and talk to my sales advisors and they'll be happy to help you out. All right. Um, when you go to this high steer kit, the next thing I wanna talk about is the Pitman arm. And uh, this is our double shear uh, twisted Pitman arm. So um, you can see that there's a spline built in right here and um, that spline matches what's on your steering box. So um, when this fits on, it tilts this into a neutral position at ride height for your FK Heim. And what that does is it increases your range of motion. So um, typically what happens is once a Jeep gets lifted, uh, the steering runs out of travel, so to speak, and uh, then locks out. Whenever something is close to that locking out spot, it's gonna be higher wear. Um, you're also taking a chance at breaking it because you're at the very limit of it. So we, we twist this, put it into a neutral position, and you're, you're well within the range of motion for those parts. Um, if, you're, if you have the bigger axle, we also do the same thing out at the knuckle. So, um, what we do here is you can see that this is put in at an angle, so it already has that built into it. So as it comes up to the steering box, it's already got the right angle built into it. So again, it's as the axle travels, it's well within its range of motion for that ball. And uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this. And when that bolts on, you wanna make sure that this can move up and down without uh, locking out or binding, okay? So um, important things, and uh, again, everything you should know, any questions, call in. We've got a lot of information on our website. Check that out when you have a chance. Okay, next item is the locker. 
So a while ago, um, we talked about lockers and this, this just showed up from Eaton and uh, this, this is the, the newest thing from them. Um, the folks from Eaton have sent this to me because they used to have a two pin e-locker. So the, the, I should back up and say, this is the Eaton e-locker. And uh, what used to happen is, is it would take about a half rotation of the wheel before it locked. Well, now with the four pin, it's got immediate engagement for whether it's forward or reverse. So this whole locker comes with a nice big wire harness, real heavy duty, the switch, the whole thing. And uh, it's an easy standalone, you know, hook it up and, and mount it. Um, if you've never done gears or a carrier like this in your Jeep, then you're gonna to wanna to take this to a competent professional. Uh, but I did wanna let you guys know that this is available. And uh, if you're looking for a selectable locker, this is a great way to go um, where you don't have to do airlines and all that stuff. Um, the other one out there on the market that's good is the Auburn. And uh, those are the two to choose from. This one happens to be a 35 spline, but um, Eaton also sent me a 40 spline. Uh, these are both uh, for the Curry axles we sell. So pretty nice product. Um, let's see what else we got. Next, we're going to talk about fuel pumps and upgrades. So <clears throat> for a lot of you, uh, this is called a fuel pump module. This one happens to be for a YJ. And this one looks like typical uh, late model TJ or JK. Okay, it's, it's spring loaded. And um, what, what you don't realize is that inside both of these units is a little tiny pump that looks like this. Uh, typically, it's a Bosch or a Walburl. Those are the two manufacturers. However, I am going to be upgrading our budget YJ to a new Aeromotive unit. Get this guy out of here. Okay. Go. So um, this is the Aeromotive unit. We've got these on our website. You can find them on there. Um, this is a direct replacement for this unit. So you can see that it's uh, very similar in size. It'll fit right in here. It comes with a brand new sock that goes on the bottom, just like this one. So you get a nice clean sock to put on there and uh, all the wiring that you need to, to rewire it into your system, including the other side plug, which is real nice. So um, you can cleanly take this in and out if you need to. It even comes with a little um, insulator or isolator to keep it quiet or resize it to whatever size your module is inside. Um, this one is very simple. It just bolts in on the YJ. On the TJ, you've got to take this apart. And uh, this is actually the pump down inside there. This is that same little sock, um, but that's the TJ pump hiding up inside there or JK and uh, again pretty easy to um, get in there and modify that okay so the other thing I was going to talk about while we had all this out was um, some of our tanks are deeper and um, sometimes what you have to do is take this bolt out and you can move it down to this position or even drill a new hole and get it longer. And then you can see there's plenty of length on the wires. You just add a longer hose here and then it, you, you want the pump, whether it's this unit or this unit, to reach to the bottom of the tank. That's super important that it's sitting on the bottom. Uh, otherwise, it's unsupported. And, uh, you know, as this thing, you know, it's supported up here, but there's a lot of weight down here. And as it's jiggling, eventually it's going to cause problems. Um, we recently had one of our buddies that broke off inside. So, um, you know, you want to be careful about that. And then on this unit, we make an extension kit um, for the one with the metal rods. And uh, that's going to come with some new hose and wires and, uh, you know, the pump if you need it. So um, these retail for about 70 something bucks. So nice upgrade. If you um, are going to a bigger engine, a higher performance engine in your Jeep, you want to upgrade this pump. This is higher volume, higher pressure. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, you know, the one that's in your Jeep is probably 20 or more years old. So um, updating the pump is, uh, you know, the Aeromotive is a really nice high quality unit. So um, you're going to want to check that out. All right, next on the list, uh, JL roll cages. Uh, good news is, 
Ours is in the shop. We've already cut out the, uh, the factory cage and uh, we're installing our Genrite cage. It's a brand new two inch 120 wall cage, uh, beautifully bent tubes and everything. And uh, we'll be posting more pictures on this um, as the build goes on, we'll, we'll do it every Monday, or sorry, every Wednesday at a bare minimum. So uh, stay tuned for more on that. All right, so as always, if, uh, if you don't see what you're looking for on our website, it, there's a smart search button. You can type in part of the description, the part number, whatever, or just call in and talk to my guys. And uh, by all means, if you're happy with our parts that you have on your Jeep, go in and write a quick one or two sentence review. We'd sure appreciate that. All right, stay tuned for the next Tech Talk.